That's me in May of 2021. I had just purchased a Jeep CJ5 I call Sarge. A Jeep like I always wanted. I wanted a hobby project, but a mechanical one. Normally I would have drifted to my profession and built a computer or a network to occupy my hobby time, but I recently started playing with Jeeps and off-roading. I had had Jeeps in the past, but they never saw anything but snow or ice. But this one would be different, and he would require a lot of work before I could take him off-roading. Here's the thing. Older vehicles, and antique Jeeps in particular, require a lot of care. Think about it. You could buy a brand new car and drive it day one with little to no issues. Antique Jeeps are made from steel. And as I tell people that ask about him, I tell them, if you listen really carefully, you can hear him rust. It's not only the body. It's the drivetrain, too. Sergeant transmission and the engine were 46 years old. They had lasted a long time, but was showing signs of wear. This update video is going to cover body maintenance, transmission rebuild, and engine replacement. I hope you've watched my older videos, but just in case. Sarge is a 1978 CJ5 Basic, narrow track, with a 258 inline six-cylinder, with a Carter one-barrel carburetor, AMC 20 rear axle with a one-piece axle kit, and a Dana 30 front axle with locking hubs. It has a Borg Warner T150 three-speed transmission with a Dana 20 transfer case. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help the channel and it does make me feel better. Now on to the updates. I knew when I purchased Sarge that the body had issues and although I had repaired them the best I could, I knew they would raise their ugly head again. Sure enough, about one year later, the Bondo on the passenger side popped and made a crack of the paint, shown here. I did sand the section back down and, set and repaired it, but I didn't like the result. I then decided I needed to find a body shop to redo my body work. I went to an antique shop that normally do full restores for cars and trucks, but that was way too expensive. So I decided to go a different route. I tried regular body shops. Well, after trying for one and a half years in every single body shop saying, we only do insurance work, I finally talked to a shop that told me to find a welder since I was going to paint myself. Now, that made sense. And I went to my good friend, Dwayne, at Oak Grove Welding. He told me to sand it down and bring Sarge by, and he'd be glad to cut the section out and weld new metal into the body. As I sanded to bare metal, I found the reason the Bondo popped. At some point, someone else welded in new metal, but didn't do it very well. With that find, I decided to sand the entire passenger side from just behind the front fender to the tail light. <laughs> that was a job. They were not kidding when they said the Raptor liner was good paint. I tried sandpaper, and it basically laughed at that. And then went and grabbed my trusty wire wheel. It took two full wire wheels to get the Raptor liner off the body to get it ready for cut and weld. Dwayne then cut the bat out and welded new metal in this arch. My understanding, the metal came from a grain silo. <laughs> it looked great, so it was back to me to start the Bondo process and repaint with Raptor liner. I just followed my previous process and it turned out great. I was very happy with the results. If there's one thing I've learned from this process is that I can do body work fairly well if I need to. Now we'll move on to the body mounts. One of the other items that I noticed when I first purchased Sarge was the rubber body mounts. Picture these rubber pieces as the lift and cushion of connecting the body with the frame. I knew his mounts were in bad shapes, but not as bad as they really were. The body had crushed the mounts, and only two were holding the body to the frame. Wow! Once again, I asked Dwayne to do his work for me, as the body would need to be lifted from the frame to complete the work. He did, and also re-welded a new body mount that had rusted out in order to complete the work. The complete job had an interesting effect. The body had a two-inch lift from the previous position. Yeah, it was factory, but two inches higher than normal for me. I'm so glad I had this work done to help preserve Sarge. The two pictures showed the before and after position. Impressive. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help the channel. And if you don't, Bigfoot will come visit you. Now we'll go to the transmission rebuild. Sarge has a Borg Warner T-150 three-speed transmission. The transmission was starting to grind as I would downshift to second gear, but otherwise it worked well. I decided that if the transmission was having that problem, if I solved it early, before any further damage occurred, it would save me money in the long run. 
Now, I have several goals with the transmission rebuild. One, the transmission had Pittsburgh steel gears. And if these gears were in good shape, I didn't want cheap, poorly made steel gears to replace my existing ones. Two, the clutch worked well, but I thought, while the transmission's out, maybe I should replace it with a new Luke clutch. With these goals in mind, I needed a transmission guy with gray hair to rebuild it. <laughs> a friend recommended Rodney's transmission in Tompkinsville, Kentucky. The transmission was removed and shipped to Rodney. I gave him goal number one with the gears to replace only what was needed. Three weeks later, he called and said everything went well. The original gears were in great shape and the second gear synchronizer fork was bad. He only replaced that synchro fork and the bearings while the transmission was out. I was a happy camper. Goal number one met. I had the transmission reinstalled with a new loop clutch. And what a difference. Goal number two was met. I felt like Sarge was a video game player and he had just got a new life. <laughs> the new clutch and rebuilt transmission shifted like magic. I now had one more item to complete. The engine. The 258. Sarge's engine was 46 years old, and before I purchased him, he had set off and on for 10 years. That kind of non-use is extremely hard on an engine. The engine still ran good for around the neighborhood, but the long trips that I wanted to take did take a toll on the engine. The longer trips was to the east or west Tennessee, and he was burning quite a bit of oil, so I decided to purchase a Jasper 258 replacement engine. I contacted several shops but decided to go with my friend Sean at Creasy's Auto Service, and he ordered a new engine for me. Three weeks later, the new Jasper arrived. I was excited. Sean's team began taking Sarge's front grille and radiator off, and began taking pictures to make sure everything went back together as it came off. With the old engine out, I decided to verify it was the original 258 Sarge came with from the factory. It was. That is awesome. That not only made me feel how great the quality of the original engine was, but how it lasted even with neglect. It also meant that he was stock. The other cool factor was the Jasper engine that we received was from a 1979 Jeep. Now the focus was moved to reassembly. The guys found several issues where previous mechanics had not assembled items correctly and was addressed with a new build assembly. The new engine was installed and tested. It worked great. With a brief test period of 250 miles to ensure everything was running as expected, we went to Jeep Invasion 2024 and put over 1,200 miles before the break-in oil was changed. Didn't use a drop of oil, and the new motor is much more powerful. Really glad I had that done. Thanks, Sean. I have enjoyed the annual updates on the Jeep I call Sarge. He will go into just maintenance mode, which means I would just simply drive him, maintain him, and no more big changes. I mean, unless I find something I really want to. <laughs> I go a lot of places with Sarge, whether off-roading or Jeep shows or just driving around. I talk to a lot of folks about him, and they all have the same thing to say. That is a real Jeep. Yeah, they like the Rhino paint, but they also like the history of the Jeep vehicle. It reminds them of when they were young, or they had a CJ themselves, or a young person that has just some sparkle in their eye for Jeeps, that I had, and may have one someday themselves. Sarge is not a Rubicon, but he's closer to the original than a Rubicon, and I believe more character, and so does most of the people I talk to. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, drop me a line, and I'll answer if I can. Thanks, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Really, it does make me feel better.